insight number five, finishing off for the week. 110 is really just so beautiful. Um, the language that's described there to describe Christ as he comes to say, look, I have, I've heard your prayers and I answer. And in verse 7, I have accepted. And again, we can replace house with life. I have accepted this life. Kind of cool. So there's a sort of a theme you can put to really have that self-assessment around yourself and, and to please remember too that we always hear, always, 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 we do not judge our past, we just improve on tomorrow. We don't beat up on ourselves about what we're not doing. We make goals and positivity to just do better, to try harder and to continue to progress and become. That's what we're about around here. All right. So, um, yeah, first of all, the Lord appears, and then you get uh, Moses, Elias, and Elijah, and they each come and restore keys for different things. And if you want to go through that, go to the Come Follow Me manual, and it takes you through each one, what's restored, and you can have a look at that. Um, super, super cool. And I just want to point out that you'll probably, if you're in a Gospel Doctrine class or some other class, there are differing opinions as to who Elias is. Now go with scripture. Please go with scripture. Please go with the Gospel Media Library app because that is correct. There's a reference book I've got that states that it's Noah, which it may or may not be. It states that it's John the Baptist, which it may or may not be. Elias actually means a messenger forerunning of Christ. So a messenger that comes before Christ. So John the Baptist was an Elias. It is a thing, and it can be a name, because there was a man in the Old Testament called Elias. It could be him too. It's not likely to be. It could have been anyone. It could have been any priesthood holder. Any of them. It could have been someone who hadn't yet been on earth. We don't know. It's an Elias. So have a look at that, because the footnote there takes you to the Bible Dictionary. The Bible Dictionary gives the best description. Go with the scriptures. So if you're in a Gospel Doctrine class and an argument breaks out over this, or what's not called Gospel Doctrine anymore, I don't know, Sunday School, whatever they're calling it, or if your family member's going on and on about, oh, I know who this is, actually, no, they don't. Um, so go to Bible Dictionary, have a good read of that if you want to deep dive into that study. Just want to point that out. But we're going to look at verses 10 and 16, I believe. Yes, 10 and 16. I did, I did write that down. All right. Oh, we're already like three minutes in. Gosh, that. All right. All right. Verse 10 said, And the fame of this house shall spread to foreign lands, and this is the beginning of the blessings which shall be poured out upon the heads of my people. And this is the blessings from the temple and, and having a temple. Um going to the temple, being a covenant-keeping temple person with the promises you make in me. Uh, verse 16 says, Therefore the keys of this dispensation are committed into your hands, and by this you may know that the great and dreadful day of the Lord is near, even at the doors. Now you can take that section and be like, the great and dreadful day of the Lord, oh my gosh. It's, it's not going to be dreadful, it's going to be joyful. Dreadful meaning just and it will be dreadful for those that don't know what's happening it's going to be dreadful for those that aren't with Christ it's not going to be so nice um, but just don't don't look at that part so much just look at the, the phrase the Lord is near because that's what it's about that's really what it's saying the Lord is near that veil super thin um where it didn't used to be. It used to be a lot thicker. Uh, also just verse 9. the um, It talks about. That's known as the Kirtland Endowment. Um, being endowment is a gift. And this one was just about new truth. And that ordinances are coming. Because this was a temple that wasn't like the temples we have now. Um, it's a little different. And so. Well a lot different really. But it didn't have the same kind of thing. It was kind of like a chapel that we have now that was just a house of the Lord. Yeah, kind of a mix. That's interesting. Go have some, go read about it. It's really good. Anyway, the beginning of blessings, the Lord is near. So verse 10 is the beginning of the blessings. That was in 1836. Yes, I was right. That's on April 3rd, 1836. April 3rd. Mm, April 3rd, 1836. April 3rd is my husband's birthday, so yeah. 
Anyway, not 1836 though. Nah. <laughs> Although, I mean, no, no, it's not. I'm just kidding. Okay. Oh, camera wobble. Oops, guys. Sorry. All right. So the beginning of blessings, the Lord is near. In 110, the Lord answers their petition to hear and answer them. Because remember, they talked about hear and answer us. And this is his answer. Um, he confirms the offering is accepted and the restoration of the priestal keys are given for filling Elijah's prophecy. We are entitled to and encouraged to embrace these available blessings. With these keys restored and entrusted to a prophet, this dispensation was now fully equipped. It was and is a time like no other. The Lord is near. And I think that's just so beautiful. Now the quote I have from this is from Aldo Uchtdorf, and you might think that doesn't really have anything to do with it, but it does. Because in teaching institute and in sitting in church, I just hear over and over and over people looking for some magic, some big thing that is going to bring them closer to the Lord or, um, you know, answer their questions that they have and they're looking for like, you know, oh, but there's got to be more. Like, how do we do this better? Oh, well, we've got to do this better. And they, and they make it into this grand thing. They're looking for something out there that's complicated. Oh, it's got, it, it's, it's an awesome reward. Therefore, the process must be complicated. You know, it really isn't. It's very, very simple. The gospel of Jesus Christ is incredibly simple. Incredibly simple. So much so it gets overlooked. And that's why I put this in here. Because the blessings that are available to us in this dispensation from these keys that were restored that our prophet now holds, that all our Quorum of the Twelve and the First Presidency hold, that they share this structure and these keys and these priesthood blessings and all of this we're entitled to in the temple. We get all of this. We are able to have it. It's available. It is encouraged. And yet, we overlook it. So that's why I put in this quote from Aldo Uchtdorf. And he said... There is a beauty and clarity that comes from simplicity that we sometimes do not appreciate in our thirst for intricate solutions. And in the temple, there is definitely a beauty and simplicity and clarity. And we don't appreciate it because we're looking for more intricate solutions. And actually, they don't need intricate solutions. The best solutions are prayer, scripture study, serve others, go to the temple. It's, it's really it. It's very, very simple. It is not complicated. And it's just beautiful. So there you go. There's my thoughts on that one. We've had another great week. I am so grateful that you joined me. Please come back next week. Tell your friends. Invite them too. Um, yeah. I don't know when we're going to go back to church. We're still in lockdown. So, yeah. Um, stay safe out there. I love you guys. And have a really great weekend.